Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from a company that I have not, I came across just recently and they have some really interesting designs. Now, as many of you have that have been watching me for a while know that, you know, I grew up in the 80s, so I do have a certain place in my heart for retro themed things and the keyboards they have on there are completely I mean the designs are they're straight out of like 80s cyberpunk in my opinion so I reached out to them and um, one of their marketing guys was like sure you know and I was like you guys got some interesting keyboards I'd love to take a review you know make a review and and uh, he's like well which ones do you like and it was like oh, I, I, honestly, I wanted one of each. They've, they've got maybe like close to a dozen models, maybe more. But I, I picked two and I was like, hey, you know, wh whichever one of these you want to send me. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I'll send you both. And I was like, oh. So I received one um, day before yesterday and I just got one like literally just a few minutes ago. The name of the company is Me Kit. And today we're taking a look at their T80. Now, like I said, this this is probably not for everyone it's definitely for me and i think that there's going to be some other retro fans up there out there that would probably agree this reminds me of a couple different things from i know it's not exactly the same but the coleco vision or the uh the famicom it's it's just i don't know it talks to me first right. off let's read some of these specs we've got the T80 mechanical keyboard. This is the Hazel Chocolate um, ver, uh, model. It is a three-mode wireless, and it comes with a 4,000 milliamp-hour battery. So that's about all. Oh, here we go. So yeah, we have TTC Holy Pandas. Oh, very cool. Um, I have not had a chance to try those yet. So it's an 80%, and we have like a barrel encoder and two different encoders. Like I'm gonna guess one of them is for the mode, but we will see. So again, this is the Mi Kit T80, 83 key, tri mode connection, mechanical switches, multimedia knob, and key rollover, hot swappable, and multi-device connection. All right, so let's open this up and see what we got. So we got a nice user manual. All right, it's one of the fold outs. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We got a whole mess of these are nice quality stickers. Right, this is like warranty, battery, radio frequency. This is, I mean, they're definitely doing their due diligence when it comes to the uh, FCC. All right. Oh, and we got a cable. It's just, oh, that box is actually a part of it. Huh, interesting. So we have a USB C to USB A cable, and we have the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And we have a key switch and key cap. So here we have the Mi Kit T80. Um, I've got to say, like I said, the colors, the the colors they have, it matches what what I saw on the website. This is definitely what I expected. So I like when they take nice pictures. It's it's just disappointing when you see a product and you believe it's a certain product. You know, it's a certain color. Um, especially like something like this, say if it was bare bone and you decide to buy keycaps that you want to match or already have them, that's why you purchase that color and then you receive it and it's like literally like several tones difference and it's like that doesn't look anything like the color in the pictures. But uh, to a certain degree, color is subjective, only to a certain degree, but still matching colors, you should match, this one matches. So below we see that we have really nice rubber feet as well as two sets of fold-out feet for a total of three typing angles. And we also have our wireless, or wired and wireless. So taking a look at this, I do see two, one through three screws up at the top. I'm wondering if there's any screws below here, but today I'm just doing a, a review of it. I most likely will come back and be doing a mod, and that's when we'll open it up and see what we got in there. But for today, I just want to take a look at the keyboard. So it looks like we've got three signals now. 
Yeah, okay, so that's clicks. Alright, this one has a light on it. Oh no, that's not a light. Oh, it's almost got like a... Oh, it's got like a rubbery texture. That's interesting. And both of these are just... Just continue turning. I, was a, I thought maybe that was mode switch. Now we do have a USB port that's recessed. It's a little bit bigger than the USB port, but still. It might have trouble with some cables, but not too many. I don't think see what we've got under here oh they are double shot keycaps I love that brown yeah this is this almost actually reminds me of the 70s to be quite honest with you all right so where are they 1.5 1.6 1. 1.4 all right that's still a decent thickness they are definitely thicker than most of your uh, pre-built keycaps set this over here um, let's take a look at these TTC's I, I don't have too much familiarity with I've got I think two, two TTC's I believe but I do like that they have this I don't know if it's an insert that comes out but yeah it does I believe it does it that's like a light diffuser and it takes that RGB and just blows it out of the water now we do have a south facing PCB and it does look like there's not only foam between the plate and PCB, well, maybe there's not foam below it. It looks like there's a light open cell foam in there. So this is a TTC Holy Panda. Everyone's making Holy Pandas, aren't they? Very slight ping. And hmm. I'm trying to think what it reminds me of. Almost reminds me of a lighter Halo True. Though it has a bit louder of a punch. Alright, let's see what we're looking at for stabilizers here. I didn't put any the foam that's you know because there is cased PCB foam here um, it would be nice because it's going to help with the echo although I didn't really hear much of an issue do have a steel plate that's pretty dense that's an open cell phone that's down there a lot of times open cell phones can capture a good amount of the sound these stabilizers they're actually nicely fit. Unfortunately, they are the milky ones, but they seem to actuate fine. And they are lubricated lightly, but just enough. So let's just take a listen to that sound. Space bar real quick. <laughs> Come on, guy. I don't know why I just expect this to be north facing. I'm sure a lot of people are going to appreciate that it's south facing. Oh, that's, those are cherry keycaps. This is only the second keyboard I think that I've encountered that has cherry profile keycap stock. So let's go ahead and plug her in and see what the RGB looks like. Whoa, that's nice and bright. I like that. I like that it came on just like that, too. Alright, so that one right now is set to the effects. Off. Rainbow. Dazzle. Alright, this is brightness. I believe they're programmable, but I'm going to check before we're done here. Alright, so this is volume. None of these are pressable. So if you want mute, you're going to have to figure out which one is which. 
the user guide. Remember the old maps? And McNally. Come on, kids. We're going on a road trip. We gotta get the maps. Alright, so that's about connecting. And then this tells you that the indicator LEDs and what they mean. There's nothing about the RGB. <clears throat> Alright, so I did miss something. I missed one more flap to pull down. It does show the uh, the shortcut. So we can do enter is backlight effect switching. So it's the same thing as the uh, and then shift is the change of colors. And then uh, function and spacebar hold down will do the uh, reset. And function tab changes between Mac and Windows layout. And then you could do function caps lock to switch the caps and the control key. So you can have your control up here, which a lot of people like. And function Z is to turn the backlight on and off. Um, now, as far as I can tell from looking at their website, I went to the download section and the only thing that was there were copies of this user guide and that's how I figured out that I had missed a section but um, they have a number of really cool keyboards like I said the other one I, I think that I have is the D6, DK65 I'm not sure I haven't opened it yet but I didn't see a single link for software it feels kind of stiff I do believe the other one I got is gasket mount but it does have padding but if it doesn't have software, I mean, I appreciate the control and caps lock switch, but I do things differently. And I'm sure a lot of other people do. And granted, we'd all love QMK Viya, but at the minimum, you need some sort of software. One, to switch any key combination. And two, I've got to believe that the MCU on this supports or the RAM and the MCU combination supports per key RGB, but there's no way for me to do it. Where's insert? Where's where's pause? I mean, they just don't exist and I just don't get to use them? I, I'm kind of just a little, huh? So I sent an email to uh, Evan, who's the guy over at uh, MeKit that we've been talking. He's the one that sent these over. And I am going to wait to hear back from him. Uh, but, I mean, so far, like I said, construction-wise and uh, kitsch-wise, I, I, I love this. This is, it speaks my love language, if you will. It, it's it's retro. It's, I mean, I, I, I so could see this having been, something close to this having been a com uh, one of the computers, you know, one of the actual computers that were underneath the keyboard, like the Commodore or the Mika, the TI-99. Um, I This would have just fit right in. No one would have thought twice looking at this keyboard as, you know, it didn't, it wouldn't be out of place in the 80s, in my opinion. And it almost reminds me of 70s McDonald's. I don't know why. I mean, some of the colors, I guess, I don't know. A lot of colors actually are these. Just a whole bunch of different things. But, and, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it sounds good even for, you know, the, the springs not being lubed or the switches not being lubed and it being a steel plate. I really hope there's software at least coming because without software, it's just kind of like, because, I mean, I know I use Insert every day. I use Midnight Commander and Insert is Select. But where is Insert? <sighs> And there's no way to program these? I mean, okay, so that that's, what if I wanna use, you know, this for brightness and this for volume? The name of the game with keyboards is customizing them so that they fit you. So, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm not gonna make any judgments yet until I hear back from them. So I'll be coming, I mean, not into the video, but I'll, I'll be back in a second for you. It's gonna be a little while for me. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the MeKit T80, a 75% three mode keyboard from MeKit. This is in the hazel chalk colorway. It includes a 4000 milliamp hour battery, an ABS case, a steel plate, double shot PBT cherry keycaps, 
and has a selection of Gateron and TT switches to choose from. It also includes one scroller at the top with two knobs down at the bottom. They only control volume, brightness, and the RGB effects. There is no pocket for the 2.4 GHz dongle, and there currently is no software for customization, and there is no ETA for when the software will be available. This keyboard MSRPs for between $109 and $139, depending on the choice of switches. It weighs in at 978 grams, while the chin of this keyboard sits at 18.5 millimeters above the typing surface, and the back sits at 25.5 millimeters, providing a default typing angle of 5 degrees. Using the first set of feet, you will raise the back up to 32.5 millimeters and giving you an 8 degree typing angle. With the final set of feet, you raise the back up to 40.5 millimeters, giving you a typing angle of 11 degrees. All right, so I actually started this video over a week ago, um, and I've been waiting for them to reply with more than just um, the software is coming sometime in 2023, maybe. Um, and that the first version was only going to be basic things, and then customization and programming and changing the knob functionality and the keys was going to be the second version. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I don't get why they release the keyboard without software, especially one that has knobs that people are going to want to customize. Not releasing software to me doesn't make much sense. Um, another quirk, I guess, or complaint are that these knobs, they're so flat. They, uh, I mean, they're not even, they're not taller than five millimeters, I would guess. But you can barely get a grip on the side to change it. It's not like you can stick your fingers inside of those little grooves. Usually those are bigger. That's why you can put your fingers there and use it like a handle. Um, and they're just, I mean, the fact that they can't be changed and all they do is change. I mean, this changes the brightness and this changes the RGB effects while this changes volume. That's it. So not being able to, uh, to change the functionality of those and plus um, function I is insert uh, it's always to me it's function delete but what do I know uh, there's no pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle um, they obviously I mean this is what looks like to be a custom keyboard I haven't seen this anywhere else so they designed it I have to ask myself, why did they not design a pocket to store the 2.4 gigahertz dongle? And, or, at least make it one of these colors of the case instead of just white. Um, it's things like that that make, you know. Because, I mean, this keyboard, it, and I mean, I know they, they list it for one as an 80%. This is a 75% keyboard. 83 keys so anything between 81 and 84 keys is usually considered a 75 percent but i mean that's a 75 percent i don't know if they're considering this as the other five percent but who knows but uh here's a pre-built 75 percent this is the halo and this is a solid keyboard and the thing is it's, it's basically the same price as 119 this is 109 to 139 this has an aluminum frame, has customizable software, and they're also working on a QMK option. This keyboard, or this keyboard, this one has aluminum, that one doesn't. This one has a dongle that is a color that matches the colorway on the keyboard, especially when it comes to the ports and the switches. So you're gonna be able to not only see this, you know, if it dropped on your floor, you're gonna know exactly what it goes to. As opposed to this one, I'm going to be like, uh, does it go to a white keyboard? I mean, yes, it has Mi Kit on there, but I actually have another Mi Kit to review. I wonder if it's going to be the same color. So, I, I have difficulty understanding why they chose to release this without software and 
why is it going to take so long? I mean, it looks like it's been around for at least a couple of months from what I can gather. But, I mean, if they just chose QMK, it should take a programmer, I mean, no more than a day for the actual code. And to set everything up, I'll, I'll be easy and give them a week for the project and pushing it and setting up the repository and, you know, doing testing and everything like that. All right, one work week is more than sufficient to create, to create a QMK file. I mean, heck, there's, if you're going to use a general MCU, there's, there's generators out there that'll generate the, the base code for you. And then all you'd have to do is add the code for the RGB and the knobs. I mean, it's, it's just not that difficult. Why is it, you know, sometime in 2023, maybe there'll be software. I, I just, I don't get it. So, cause I mean, otherwise I, I want to like this keyboard. I mean, it's not, it sounds pretty good. I love the looks of it. I'm not crazy about the knobs, but I'm sure that if I mess with them, I could replace them. Uh, it comes out. Um, obviously I didn't open her up. Let me see if these knobs will come off. But I mean, finding something that matches this aesthetic. Oh, yeah, that doesn't want to come out. I don't want to mess it up. So, so I mean, I'm kind of stuck with these knobs. Maybe I could 3D print something that can make these a little bit easier to use. But like this, these are the design are meant for bigger knobs where you can actually stick your fingers in there and use it as a as a key, basically. So that's probably why I haven't seen too much of these keyboards is because people are like, oh, it's got no software. So, I mean, because you got knobs, it's customization. You're going to release something that's customizable without the tool to customize it. I, I don't get it, but what do I know? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys, as always, with a stock sound test. It actually doesn't sound that bad. I mean, if they had a polycarbonate plate on here, it would sound significantly better. Um, and, I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm going to keep on harping. They need to be using polycarbonate plates, especially on a keyboard. You know, at, or at least have the option of whether it's polycarbonate, palm, FR4, heck, even aluminum. Um, I'll take aluminum over steel, but you got to have other options, especially if you're paying north of $100. So, but that's just my opinion. So I hope you guys enjoy the sound test. If you guys have any ideas uh, for me uh, when I eventually go to mod it, I mean, maybe I'll get to mod it before the software comes out sometime in 2023. Um, but otherwise, um, let me know what you think of the sound test. Uh, stock, I think, like I said, it sounds pretty good. Um, it sounds like there's a good amount of dampening in there and it's just solidly built. I mean, I can't, can't definitely give them that. This is a solid, solid keyboard. There's no creaking. Um, it feels, the weight feels right for the size. It doesn't feel too heavy. doesn't feel too light. Um, and I, I love the look, double shot keycaps. I mean, different mounting style, different plate software then I'd say, okay, yeah, you're definitely a value proposition for what you're asking. But without software, I mean, I, I, I can work through the other things, but no software, or I got to wait for software until maybe the warranty on the keyboard has run out. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I'm going to try to leave that alone. <laughs> until the next transmission. Keep calm and keyboard on.